I think there's there's been quite a few. I mean, maybe not quite a few, but there's been a few people in my life going back. Um, I came from a household that wasn't a church family, and uh, I mean, literally, we had when I was a kid, there was a, a big fan that would come around the neighborhood and pick up the kids and take them to church, and then bring them back later, um, which sounds so weird nowadays, but. Um, I think my earliest remembrance of a single person, um, we, I had been going to a small Baptist church and I mean, there was probably 40 people that went to the whole church and uh, Jeff O'Hara was kind of the youth person. Um, he was also the son-in-law to the, the preacher, but uh, I mean, he was one of those that he would make sure that I was at church. He would come pick me up. Um, church softball, he picked me up. Um, pretty much whenever there was anything going on, he was making sure that I was there. Uh, beyond that, <clears throat> um, when I was in high school, I had a youth pastor that just, he invested time. And I mean, I think he understood where my my family dynamic was. Um, I spent a lot of time with him. I, he would, we'd go to the, the driving range. We would go just have coffee, <laughs> drink, whatever, um, <clears throat> sit and talk. And I spent plenty of time sitting at his dining room table um, just talking about life. And, um, you know, and he, he just, he invested and it was, it was genuine. Um, and I think it, you know, as I got older, I didn't really walk away, but um, I say stepped away for a while and um, finding Oasis and meeting people like Aaron and um, Kenny and others that are just genuine in their faith and genuine with how they are and um, it's not a show and it's not it's not ulterior motives or anything like that it's I care about you as a brother in Christ when I was in high school I got I, I with my youth pastor Chris um, we called him cat uh, just what he's gone by most of his life, but um, we, he got me really interested in missions and we did a lot of missions trips. I went to Mexico, I went to Ecuador and Peru. Um, and more than once being in areas where you're not welcome as Christian missionaries. And, um, I mean, I think anybody you're there with is a bonding, but looking back and understanding the situations we were in, I mean, at the time being 16, 17 years old, thinking you're invincible, um, and really not necessarily understanding the whole gravity of what you're doing there, looking back and going, hey, you know what? we were doing something kind of amazing. I mean, we went into the jungle in Ecuador, spent three weeks there, and built a school, a Christian school, for the local tribes. And at the time, I remember being very, not that it was stupid, but it was hard work. And it was, we were getting rained on, we were getting everything, and I just remember seeing my youth pastor and seeing the smile he had. I rarely ever remember him complaining about anything. I mean, he was just a very happy, just very positive person. Um, but it was energetic, it was, it was contagious, and it was, there was times where it's, you know, you're just like, I don't wanna go stand in mud and rain and tie rebar and dig holes <clears throat> um 
you know, there's times where you're like, why in the world did I do this? But it was, he made it fun. And it's, you know, and it may sound really ridiculous, but it's, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, we were down there and there was generations that are being affected because that school's there. Not that I feel any credit for that, but there's generations of young people in that area that are going to be affected and learn about God. And I think at that time he saw the big picture. You know, a lot of us kids probably didn't, but yeah. Um, so I came to know Christ as a teenager. I was probably about 12 or 13. Um, the church I went to, we, we went to summer camp every year. Um, we went to Hume Lake in, in central Northern California. Um, I remember being younger and, and having a lot of interest, but not understanding what it meant to be saved. And But at camp, we had um, the, the speakers. It's crazy. It was actually Francis Chan. And um, before he was huge and popular and everything and um and at the time i look back and i go well it was probably emotional it was probably this but i mean it i had an understanding of saying i'm a sinner there's no way that on my own i can ever get to heaven there's no way i can ever do anything good enough and um they actually had a moment in the middle of the week where they actually had a cross and we wrote down, you know, here's things that I do, you know, sins and whatnot. And we took it up there and we actually nailed it onto that cross. And um, it's a very powerful, very emotional type of thing to do. I think I've had, I've had different times where I've said yes to God. Um, I would say different times where you said yes in the short term. And then, I mean, in all honesty, probably in my adult life, I mean, after my daughter was born, um, we really, me and Janelle both were like, we need to get back involved in church. We both grew up in church. We both had that that foothold of church and just with jobs and everything it came it was hard and it was we were living out here we didn't have any other family and um, we got involved in oasis and just through different things i mean there's god worked his way to get us to where we are now but I think just in a, in a moment of saying yes and truly understanding, um, when I left, well, I mean, it's, when I lost my job that I had had, and I remember I called my wife first, um, upset, and I think I reached out to Aaron next. And it was one of those things of, hey, this happened. Um, my wife was pregnant with our son. In that moment, I was like, my life's falling apart. But then Aaron said, you've been praying for this. And I had been. I've been praying for a way out of the casino industry. I've been praying for a new opening. Um, I didn't see it happening that way. But I remember going upstairs into my house, no one else there, and literally sitting on the end of my bed <clears throat> and just praying. I don't know. But you have a plan. And I have no clue what it is. But I'm okay. And it really it changed. I was very angry at first, very just, why is this happening? Why now? To, there was a sense of peace. And it probably in that moment, one of the first times in my life where I understood where it means that like, 
washing over you. God just saying, hey, I've got you. Um, my passion in ministry, I, I think I'm still learning. I think I'm still learning. And um, <clears throat> I still have a passion for missions. I, I, I truly do. I think that's something that's going to be on my heart forever. Um, it's changed over the years. My understanding of what that means. I've had some just amazing opportunities to go to some places and witness what God's doing outside of the comfort of the United States. <clears throat> and I, I don't regret any of that. You know, I want the same feeling that when I walked through the doors of Oasis about eight years ago, every person should walk through the doors feeling that way. And you know, I mean, the first person that I came in contact at this church was, was Rachel Keegan. And Rachel Keegan's got a constant smile and happiness just bubbly. Um, and, you know, it was, it was, whoa, people are happy here. <laughs> you know, I mean, you walk into so many churches and it's like you're at a funeral service.